Hey guys, it is an air quotes beautiful Saturday here in air quotes sunny New Jersey, so you know what that means? More of this shit. Today we're going to be talking a little bit more about dynamic programming, and specifically we're going to go into the knapsack problem. We're going to be looking at the variant of that problem that does not allow for repetition, because that's the more complicated of the two variants. There is one that does allow for repetition. But um, honestly, if you can understand what we're about to go through, then that'll be easy to get back to, basically. You can do that as an exercise. Or you can Google it. Or you can sound off in the comments, and if you'd like, I'll, I'll make the video. But I don't think it's necessary. So, in this video, we're just going to talk about how the algorithm works, is my normal format. And in the next video, we'll run through a practical example, and you'll see me apply everything that we built up in here. So, it's usually called the 0, 1, 0, 1 knapsack problem. And just in case you either haven't seen the problem before, which I think is unlikely if you're here, but if you, ha if you haven't seen it, or maybe if you just need it restated, it's normally defined as follows. You're given a knapsack that has capacity W, so it has a maximum weight that it can hold before it breaks. And you're given a list of items alongside that, 1 through N, and each item has a value and weight where has a value and weight associated with it. And your job is to basically figure out the best combination of items to put in the bag given their weights and values such that you don't break the bag and you get the most money pretty much. Um, normally, this is uh, analogized like with a, with a burglar. Say, so, so they'll say like, "Oh, a burglar is breaking into a house, and he has his burlap sack with him, and he's got to steal a bunch of items, and each item has a weight and a value, and his his burlap sack has an ultimate capacity W that he can carry before it breaks. So, what's the best combination of items that he can put in his sack? Um, or if you want to ground this." A little bit more, you could say instead of like thinking of a knapsack, you could be thinking of like uh, a CPU, and you have like clock cycle access or uh, memory bandwidth or something like that. This, that, that. That's usually where this comes down to in reality. Um, and as far as the analogy goes, since we're doing the version without repetition, maybe the burglar breaking into a house doesn't make too much sense. Maybe just for your own sake, let's say he's breaking into an art gallery. Right? So there's only one of everything, and he has to pick a specific set of items to go into the knapsack. So let's start to break it down. So when, you, when you're given a dynamic programming problem, it's always the same format. They give you a setup for the problem, and then it's your job to basically break it down and figure out a way to solve it by solving a series of sub-problems, just like with chain matrix multiplication in the, uh, I think, two videos ago. So let's first define the problem itself. We were, we're looking for the maximum value that we can achieve given a knapsack of capacity W and a list of items N. So let's call that M, N, W. And that would be our main function. But we want to break this down into smaller problems, so let's do that. Let's give ourselves a couple more variables to play around with. Let's say that we have some smaller sets of items and smaller weights. Okay? So now we can look, so now we can look inside of this. And we have a new function now. We have J and W, so now we can call this... And this is defined the same way, all right? So this is the maximum value that we can achieve given a set of J items and a knapsack of capacity W less than or equal to, whoa, less than or equal to big W. That would have really, that would have really confused things. That was like, you know, banking systems would have collapsed if I'd left that there. 
So we want to break this down. We need one more step. It's usually two steps. You're given a problem, you break it down into a subproblem, and you break that into subproblems, and then you're done. So we want to break this down one more time. How do we actually express this logically? So we have m, j, w, right? Well, this is going to map to a table that you'll see in the next example, a lot like chain matrix multiplication. A lot of these problems are really similar. Um, so if you think of this as a table, then we're looking at a set of j items, and we have a capacity of w. So if we're looking at the jth item, then what we're getting at is in this specific case, either we're going to take the item and put it in the knapsack, or we're not going to take it for whatever reason. Either it doesn't fit, or somehow putting it into the knapsack does not give us a greater value. So we'll define that like this. Let's define that logically. We'll say it's the maximum of So here, this is the scenario where we do, in fact, take item J and put it into the knapsack. This would work. So this is going to return a value altogether. You've got right here, this in our table will correspond to the cell that represents the value of the knapsack without the item in it. Right? Without any item in it here. Well, well without this item in it. But, um, so we're subtracting the weight. We're looking at a knapsack that has an optimal weight of uh, that much less, basically. We're subtracting the weight of the item, and we're subtracting the item itself. And that's going to return a value, the value of the knapsack at that cell. And then we're going to add the value of our item, and that'll tell us that value. Then, there's the option where we just don't take the item at all. So we have... W. So here we just remove the item from consideration and take the weight that we had before. And that'll give you the cost, where we leave the weight, we leave the bag as is, and we just don't take the item. In our table, that'll give you that cost, or value rather. We talk about cost so much, it's hard to, you rarely talk about value in computer science. So the algorithm is also pretty straightforward. And this is, I, I think, I, I hope, I think this makes sense. Yeah, so there are just two options. Either the item goes into the knapsack, or it doesn't. That's it. And we do that by comparing these two values and taking their maximum. All right, just to make sure that we're clear on that, because this is, this is the backbone of the entire algorithm. So... If we're going to, just to throw out some pseudocode for you, we're going to have a nested for loop. So we're iterating through the weights, so that's going to be so the items are the outer for loop, and we're going to iterate through all the weights. And you'll see that when I do the example with the table. So we're going to iterate through the items, and for each item, we're going to iterate through all the weights. At every step, we're going to check if weight of j is greater than the weight that we're currently looking at. So these are going to go all the way up to weight w, and at every, at every step, we want to make sure that this item can even fit in the knapsack. And in the event that it doesn't, this is what we do. We just have the option where we don't take the item, because it doesn't fit. And then there's an else statement here, because every if demands an else, remember that. And at that point, we just run this. And in the end, we return this. Once you've iterated through everything, this is where we want to be. And doing it this way, 
does allow us to solve the problem in O of n w, which is deceptively not actually polynomial. It's because uh, w is defined in terms of log w, so it's a little wonky, but it's also not exponential, so that's good. Uh, yeah, that is how the algorithm works and the problem statement. Hopefully that gave you some intuition leading into the next video. And I will see you there. Thanks for stopping by.